you know, insurance companies, most of them don't want to pay out. Right. So they'll find, like, if you read wait, through the- Wait, wait, so insurance companies don't want to pay their customers? Like, they don't want to cover losses? What's the short-term rental grade? Yeah. Short-term rental grade. That's yeah. a great question. So Because we don't believe in a rental grade, really. No. Yeah. At the same time, there's something different. It's a different product. Right? Yeah. You're not going to get in trouble with your guest for having a beautiful home. You're going to get in trouble with your guest if your, your house is dirty, if it's not been cleaned, if they find you know, cockroaches. I had the question about what was your worst horror story. I had a guest check in on my birthday. I was having dinner with Allie. We were having dinner at this Thai place between where we live and where my dad, my dad lives in Waxahachie. And we're sitting at a dinner and I get a call from an unknown number to my business line and I just kind of ignore it because I'm like, it's birthday time, right? She's like, just turn your phone off, right? And the call comes through again. I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta look at this. And I get a message right after the call that says, my kids are covered in cockroaches. And I was like, like my heart stopped for like a beat. And I was like, Allie, I gotta take this. And I step outside and I just called the number back. I'm like, hello, this is Chris. And they're like, hey, like really happy. Hey, um, yeah, we just checked into the Airbnb and uh, our children sat down on the couch and there's like 40 cockroaches crawling on them. And I was like, I'm so sorry. You know, what can I do to, to fix that, ma'am? Because I'm thinking like she's just gonna like go off like on a tear. And she's like, do you have another house that we could stay at? And I was just like, let me find one for you. Like we, at, in that market, we didn't have another property. And I was just like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find you one. And I'm gonna refund you and we're gonna just take care of you. And I learned that from my friend Austin Lenny, who he has a podcast too, um, Construct Your Life. And he's just like, he did 20 years in hospitality, high-end hospitality. He was a high-end bartender and working with like really, really high-end clients. And it just goes back to that customer service. It's like a lot of times customers just need to vent. Yeah. She actually happened to be uh, dating a guy who was a pest, pest control guy. So she was like, oh no, no, this is, this is normal. And I was Lucky like, there. yeah, yeah, I was like, oh, whoo. I just like hit my mic, but like we just dodged a bullet, you know? And we found her another place. We got her moved in that other place. And then for the next two weeks, we bombed the place. Every three days, our pest control guy was going in there and spraying. And every three days, my cleaner would follow up and just scrub it down, like bodies yeah. everywhere. And what we found out was that the local store, the Publix, which is a grocery store there, um, they actually have cockroach problems because cockroaches lay their eggs on cardboard and it brings them with. And same thing with Amazon warehouses. Like that's one of the reasons why you don't want customers delivering packages to the house. You don't want them bringing them in. So I learned that too. I was like, wow, hmm. So we have this specialty type of insurance that covers that period of loss. And that was about three, three grand wow. for that two weeks. Actually, was, I think it was like so a week and a half. You, I was about to say, you just opened up a, yeah. like a, a, a rabbit hole. Because um, we're in Texas and D are, are those pure and beam houses? Like, what do I do about so, water bugs? Because so, water bugs are gigantic and going to scare the shit out of people. Well, yeah. uh, so aside from the pest control thing, the rabbit hole is insurance. Yeah. So uh, let's go down the insurance because I'm going to assume... Uh, you know, you have landlord's insurance, right? So if you have builder's risk for your rehabs, you have landlord's insurance uh, with vacancy clauses for your for your rental properties. Uh, is there a whole nother subset for uh, short-term rental insurance? Yeah, yeah, definitely a great question. And, and then, because landlords, uh, sorry investors, but it's so freaking true, you have a tendency to go stupid cheap on insurance and then wonder why shit's never covered. I would assume in this situation, you don't necessarily want the cheapest insurance. You want like the right fit. Mm -hmm. Any, what's that look like? Yeah, what's that look like? Any you know, insight onto that? Because yeah. I didn't even know you can get like coverage, like loss coverage, right? Like, yeah, I loss of use. Yeah, yeah. Bed bugs. I mean, the, the type of insurance we use is from a company called CBiz. It's C B I Z, and that one just covers everything. It covers the structure contents, so structure up to two million. So if you have a bigger house, you have to have an umbrella policy, umbrella policy. But then the contents, so all of the furnishings. If you go really high end, some of the most expensive furnished homes that we work with are, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars of furniture. Wow. So if a guest 
dropped a cigarette by accident, which they shouldn't be smoking in the house anyways, but then they did, and then it caught the house on fire, and then the whole thing burns out. Well, then the, the CBIS or proper, or even farmers has a short-term rental policy. Um, it actually takes the renter's insurance component and the landlord insurance component and combines them. So it covers the contents, the structure, loss of use, uh, bed bugs, um, you've got accidental damage built into that. It's basically, it's a business policy yeah. that covers everything. So we like to use CBIS because it's like, in terms of a cost per you know, total revenue generated, um, you're looking at about, on a standard three bedroom, two bath, like 1,200 square foot, it's about $2,400 a year. That's so to me, that's comparable to owner occupied. Like if you were to go get an owner occupied with contents and you mm -hmm. know uh, actual like a uh, replacement cost value, right? If you're going to get an actual homeowner's policy, I that's, feel like that's very comparable. Yeah, it would be similar. And the difference is that you know insurance companies, most of them don't want to pay out. Right. So they'll find like if you read wait, through the wait, so insurance companies don't want to pay their customers like they don't want to cover losses. That's, that's most a thing? of the time they, they they try to find a reason why the policy doesn't cover it. Yes. So if you read through your policy and it, it has some sort of clause that says type of activity that can be going on inside the structure. Like for example, you can't run a baking business out of your house. And if you baked and caught the house on fire, well, like why did the house catch on fire? Well, we were smoking cigarettes. You know, like <laughs> you just want to. <laughs> You know, you don't want to tell them that you're running a business in your house because it wouldn't be covered in the policy. Right. So that's why these kind of, kind of specialty insurers have moved in because um, proper is written by Lloyd's of London and CBiz is written by Berkshire Hathaway. And so they saw a need in the marketplace because of the growing trend. Uh, Short-term rentals are more popular than hotels because of the kind of value proposition. You know, you get a place, usually a hotel is 300 square feet, uh, short-term rental average furnished apartment is going to be 600 plus. It's going to have a kitchen. It's going to have a laundry room. So you don't have to go over and like launder your clothes or whatnot. You can just wash them in the unit. And it also tends to offer some other amenities too. Like you, you have a pool at most hotels, but you don't have like a lap lane pool. Some apartment complexes do. And then houses, they're just a private residence. So it's just a nicer. You get privacy also. You're not privacy. sharing walls. You're not having to deal with mess. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and like less people, right? I, I think we've morphed into, uh, over the last, especially the last two years, uh, we've just morphed into a, I kind of just want to get away, right? And I think we've had some private, like, text conversations where it's like, just like, oh, I, I have seen those really cool, you know, uh, like, uh, dome tent. There's, like, out, just outside of Austin, there's, like, those dome tent ones that you can mm -hmm. rent, and there's, like, eight of them on this one property and I was like dude those look so cool like you could just yeah. go and like stay in a yurt yeah it's just it's interesting yeah. right like uh, I've seen the, the coolest ones not to cut you off but was a yurt with a, a jacuzzi tub cowboy pool so they took a cowboy pool and they actually made it like a hot tub and it's between two yurts and it's called yurtopia what's a cowboy a cowboy pool is like a metal basin tub. Oh, oh so like all a right, horse all trough. Right. Yeah, right, yeah, like yeah. a horse trough, but it's a circular one. All right. And and I saw that when I was actually co-hosting a property in Georgetown, and uh, I think Ali actually showed it to me. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. We could do that. Like, it's kind of like a, you know, trail trash jacuzzi. You know, like the, the <laughs> it's shabby sheets. Anything yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, it's so like trendy that it's actually popular with millennials. Yeah. So like you can take a tent stick it on some land that has a view and you're all in like 12 grand and you're getting like 200 bucks a night they're you can they're out there you can literally go buy a trailer and drop it on like people stay in airstreams oh, airstreams are extremely yeah. expre expensive but yeah yeah we yeah. found one for for sale on ebay for like 15 grand and you can just gut it clean it out and then be all in like 50 50 thousand and then you can get like the the numbers when people think about occupancy i usually just go 50 percent so 15 days a month if you can make it cash flow two to three X what you would normally pay in the mortgage on 15 days a month, it's a pretty good deal. Most people, will, when they're, they're brand new, they're looking at like 80% occupancy. Like a market says 70, 80% on AirDNA, something like that. They're trying to make the numbers work with the high end. I'm trying to make the numbers work with the lowest end. Because then I'm like, hey, look at all that upside, yeah. you know, versus like, wow, this really doesn't work, you know.